everybody, this is Rob with Rob B's Reef, and today we're going to talk about how to mix up alkalinity reagent for your Alkatronic for $22. Now, assuming if you've mixed alkalinity reagent before for your Alkatronic, or this even applies to the Hydros, I'm not an expert on the Hydros, but um, I believe this same principle applies whether you're mixing sulfuric acid. I, I don't remember if the Hydros uses hydrochloric acid, but it doesn't matter. What we're all dealing with here, in either case, I know for a fact, is 0.05 molar uh, acid. In the case of the Alcatronic, I use sulfuric acid. And in recent years, it's gone up quite a bit for probably a variety of reasons. When I bought it two years ago, and that's basically what a gallon of uh, concentrated 0.05 molar sulfuric acid lasted me, which is two years, it was like $35. And I'm just about flat out, and I was shocked to see prices at one of the larger retail uh, aquariums places out there it's upwards of 110 dollars for a gallon or 3.75 liters and uh, there's another online retailer i think that's in the 55 to 75 range which by far less but if you go out there and you look for just these raw components you realize what kind of uh, markup and reef tax you're looking at here we're talking a uh, very low concentrate uh, sulfuric acid, and that isn't a lot of money. And then I got to thinking a little bit more, um, as a gallon of that still was fairly priced with the lower with the lower retail out there. But why am I paying for all that shipping and water when I really just want the acid? So what I thought about was why not mix one molar and reduce that to 0.05, and we could just buy it by the liter, and basically. For $22 of one liter, one molar sulfuric acid, that works out to five times what you get for buying it from any uh, online aquarium vendor. So theirs would make ultimately approximately five gallons of reagent, which lasts you a very long time admittedly. This one liter jar of sulfuric acid will give you over 25 gallons of concentrate. And we all know that that mixes even down further. So. Having a few items on hand can make this a pretty simple task. Um, I recommend for any kind of reefing applications because you're often mixing up something. I have a common kitchen scale, you know. Uh, some of these are good enough to one decimal place and they're not very expensive. They can measure grams, ounces, pounds, whatever you're wanting. I also highly recommend a one liter or 1000 milliliter glass beaker. I like to have a few 500s on hand for decanting. I keep a range of these. Uh, you can buy them in a set, like a, a 10, a 50, a 100, a 250. You know, there's a variety of them out there. For this today, we're going to be using a 50 milliliter beaker with one milliliter in increments, and it's got a nominal deviation of 0.25. So even though uh, it could be off of a, a half a milliliter, if you do the math of the concentration, it's it's a very low percentage of error. So I think we'll just be we'll be fine with that. And the other key thing to, to remember today, if you take nothing else away, remember this is a much higher concentration of acid. It's not going to burn holes in your floors. It's only one molar, like 96% pure sulfuric acid is 18 molar. And this kind of equates to 10%, whether you look at it by weight volume or volume volume they're almost identically the same they're off by 0.06 as far as the molar concentrations so we're really dealing with 10 percent acid though it's no joke so take some safety precautions this isn't like the 0.05 which is really dilute stuff um, for this case um, use a pair of safety goggles can't stress that enough have some kind of protective clothing on it's uh, just safe if you don't want to stain. You know, it's not going to burn through and eat a hole in your chest, but it, it could stain and wreck your clothes. And then just for safety precautions, um, I've got these gloves. They're rated for 18 molar acid. You could probably do it with something less. Just uh, make sure it's rated for the molar concentration that you're going to do for it. Do a little homework on that. We're going to use a glass rod for stirring. For the acid, I like to uh, use this glass syringe. It's a 10 milliliter, 10 milliliter glass syringe that we use for fine adjustments. And then you can use any syringe for fine adjustments on the, uh, on the water, the RODI. Now, I'm gonna be doing a 
a volume weight kind of thing. RODI water is pretty purified for this conversation. It basically weighs one kilogram per liter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up our RODI water by weight, and I'm going to mix up the sulfuric acid by volume, just because I don't feel like dicking around and converting the molar weight into a, or the molar mass into a weight uh, by volume. So I'm just gonna do that. And this will, this will run us uh, pretty close, I think within the, the tolerance that we need to, to run um, our concentrate on. So after we get all that mixed up, and we create our concentrate. To this today's example, I'm gonna do 750 milliliters of concentrate because at the four to one ratio, that'll give me 3.75 liters, which is also a gallon. And I like to keep it in a gallon jug uh, next to my sump where I have my Alcatronic. Are we ready to drop some acid? I'm not gonna have this hood on, but no joke, wear gloves, put some kind of covering over your clothes or wear clothes you don't care about. Rubber gloves, again, only need to be rated for one molar and above. These just happen to be like seven bucks and they're rated for 18 moles, which is 96%. So we'll be uh, making sure we glove up for sure when we touch the acid. We don't need gloves when we're dealing with our ODI water. Whatnot, but uh, make sure you take some cautions, at least respect the acid. Not trying to scare you or anything. I'm not scared. I've talked to some chemists. They're not scared. They work with that stuff all day long. It's just a comfort level, but uh, you'll see. This stuff is so easy. And a liter doesn't take up much to store. You, I'm going to wrap it in a gallon zip liner or a gallon zip lock bag, put it in the shelf in a cabinet, keep it away from your kids, lock it up. If you don't have kids, lay it, leave lay around. Maybe the cat will get into it. You'll get lucky. So. All right, let's, uh, let's make some uh, reagent. Okay, so we've got our one liter beaker here with 712.5 grams of RODI water that I've weighed out. I used this syringe to make small minor adjustments. We've got our one molar sulfuric acid And we've got a 50 milliliter flask. I'm gonna put my gloves on at this point. Safety goggle check. I said this shit is no joke. It's not gonna kill you, but you don't want it in your eyes or in your skin or your clothes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to you can't, we're shooting for 37.5 milliliters. And what I'm gonna do is get it pretty close. And then make up the rest with this glass syringe. Good. And I will not touch that again with my bare hands until I rinse it off for a few minutes. I'm gonna recap our thing there. And again, if I had mentioned it before, never, ever, ever add water to acid. Always add acid to water. Um, the reason being is when you throw water directly into acids of this concentration. Um, you're not gonna notice it's the 0.05 stuff, but at uh, one molar, it can uh, flash and create some noxious fumes. Um, pretty serious if it's really, really concentrated stuff. This is only 10, but still let's follow a, let's follow a good procedure for, for science and chemistry. They'll appreciate that and so will you. And then we'll stir for a little while. Now, at this concentration, this is the same stuff that you can buy right out of uh, any aquarium retail store. You can all this. You can also buy this concentration off of Amazon and some chemical labs. But um, 
like I said, the, the lower the lower retail outlet wasn't that far off of what I could get it from any any other place. The reason I'm doing this again is lifetime supply. It's gonna help last the uh, the equipment that I'm running it through. And it's $22 and it's that easy. We're done. So I'm gonna properly rinse out this, clean these off, and then make sure I dispose of anything along these lines with my gloves on. And now we're ready for the second half, which is um, diluting yet again, this 0.05 molar concentration and what the actual reagent is, is a 0.01. All right, now that I've uh, went through the clean room and uh, decontaminated myself here, uh, the only thing that's left to do is to actually make up the concentrate itself, which is exactly the same stuff that you buy at the store. We're gonna do, let, what I use is a one gallon jug, and this is what I hook up to my Alcatronic. Poke a little hole just big enough to put that polycarbonate tube through. We have our 750 milliliters of concentrate. And then I'm just gonna start pouring. We're still following the don't mix water to acid, mix acid to water rule, even though, honestly, I, maybe I'm a little bit of a rebel here, but at this concentration and strength, I, I, I haven't ever been wearing PPE for mixing this up for two years. I'm not saying I'll drink it, but I am saying there's a number. Submit those bids in the comments below. So you're just gonna watch me tear weight the jug and the funnel, and I'm gonna pour 3,000 grams or three kilograms or three liters of RODI water into here. Wait one. And we've got that filled up. I hope that wasn't the acid. Now we'll take our 750 milliliters of concentrate and at 0.05 moles, the stuff doesn't exactly weigh the same as RODI water, but it's awful close. And I've been doing this method for two years now and had no issues with that. Now that we're in there, seal it up, put my thumb over that because, you know, this is all about safety. But here we're making a 0.01 molar concentration. Again, there is a number, but you'll have to hit it. And I won't sit here and shake that for the three or four more minutes that I usually do. And we've just made 3.75 liters of Alcatronic reagent for not enough money to even give a shit. Now, this lasts quite a while. I'll only ever mix up the amount I need to do a full jug to throw it on the Alcatronic. And then, like I said, that keeps storage simpler. If you got a lot of storage space on your board and you like mixing stuff up, I mean, mix it up ahead of time. But it's, it's, you know, if you've used this machine before, you know how long it lasts. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please, uh, please come back. Uh, engage me in the comments. I'd like to hear from the hydros people with that unit there and um, those of you who are mixing up your own or rolling your own for that. I'd love to hear your inputs. Um, it may be, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm the one who's uh, the only one who's thought of this, but uh, I haven't seen anybody talking about it. So I thought maybe I would just uh, make this video share and hopefully you found it useful. If you hadn't heard of it or hadn't occurred to you, I hope you found it valuable. But uh, basically, kind of like uh, buying a bag of Mississippi lime if you're a, lime if you're a slurry guy like me, I've got a lifetime supply of calcium hydroxide. Now I've got a lifetime supply of alcohol. So uh, like and subscribe to my channel if, uh, if, if you didn't hate this. And uh, hopefully uh, I can put more of these out. And thanks for tuning in.